Welcome everybody to this latest episode of the Green F Show. Today we're going to be talking about the so-called Religious Discrimination Bill, or what should probably be more accurately called the Religious Bigotry Bill. Uh, my name's Alex Bainbridge and I'm from Green Left, and I'd like to welcome you here today. Uh, I'd like to begin by just acknowledging that we are recording this show on stolen Aboriginal land. Sovereignty was never ceded, and we pledge our ongoing solidarity with struggles for justice for Aboriginal people. I also just want to mention at the outset that if you like the work that we do, please become a Green Left supporter if you're not already. It makes a really big difference to the work that we uh, that we do. It's the best way to actually get the content that we produce, as well as to, to show your support. Plans start from just five dollars a month, and uh, and you can you know there's a link in the in the description for this uh, video or this podcast. Uh, also, actually, we do normally like to promote the the Green F supporterships, but we also have a Green F Patreon. Uh, we, which you can support us that way as well. We haven't had that much um, activity yet on the Green Left Patreon, but in recent times we've actually had a bit more interest. So you might be interested if you uh, use Patreon yourself, maybe you'd want to check us out and, and show us some love there. As I said, uh, today we're going to be uh, discussing this so-called religious discrimination bill. Uh, today when I'm recording this, Morrison has introduced the bill into Parliament earlier today. And he used these nice sounding words to describe it. It is the product of a tolerant and mature society that understands the importance of faith and belief to a free society while not seeking to impose those beliefs or ever seek to injure others in the expression of those beliefs. It balances, as Australia always must, freedom with responsibility. By contrast, Monash Law Lecturer Liam Elphick uh, tweeted this comment. To the journos describing the latest religious discrimination bill as watered down, maybe check in with your local discrimination law expert before making such claims. In many ways, this version of the bill is worse and overrides existing protections to an even greater degree. Morrison's words in Parliament today echo what has become the mantra of coalition politicians that this legislation is a shield and not a sword. However, constitutional law professor at Monash University, uh, Luke Beck, uh, wrote this in the conversation. Current Attorney General Michaelia Cash's third draft is effectively in two parts. The first part is a legal shield, protecting people from being discriminated against on the basis of their religion or lack of religion. This isn't really controversial as it simply adds religious discrimination to the existing suite of federal race, sex, also covering LGBTQIA plus status, disability and age discrimination laws. All states and territories other than New South Wales and South Australia already have laws prohibiting religious discrimination. The second part of the bill, however, is more of a legal sword and is more controversial. Some of the controversial features of earlier drafts, such as the ability of healthcare providers to refuse to provide treatment are gone. But the current draft still includes a range of provisions overriding federal, state and territory anti-discrimination laws to allow people to be discriminated against. Perhaps the most controversial aspect of the bill is the statement of belief provision. This provision overrides every federal, state and territory anti-discrimination law to make statements of belief immune from legal consequences under those laws. Statements of beliefs are things like Comments from a boss to a female employee that, quote, women should not hold leadership positions, unquote. Or comments from a doctor to a patient that, quote, disability is a punishment for sin, unquote. This is an extraordinary departure from standard practice in federal anti-discrimination law. Standard practice is to ensure state and territory laws are not overridden. In introducing le legislation, Morrison also said this. United in our love of our country, and the freedoms that so many, so many have come here to enjoy, particularly to escape discrimination and persecution for their religious beliefs. They came here seeking that freedom. That freedom should be protected for them. This comment is incredibly galling when juxtaposed alongside the fact that there are countless thousands of refugees that have come to Australia, in many cases precisely because they were fleeing religious persecution, and they have been detained, and in fact some are still today, locked up in onshore or offshore detention centres, gulags, black sites, 
precisely because they were fleeing religious persecution and Australia has so far denied them the freedom that they were seeking. So today we're going to be talking with uh, Charlie Murphy from Pride in Protest and I began by asking Charlie to uh, just lay out what's in the bill. Yeah, so we know that there has been some fight between the moderates and the extremists um, within the party, but what the bill has ended up being, uh, even with it being watered down, um, is is the phrase that's being used. There is still a whole bunch of stuff that is uh, really horrible for the queer community that is in this bill. Um, this includes um, basically the, the right for uh, discrimination around employment, um, the way that it's phrased is around, you know, people if they don't share the same faith. Um, we know that that is what that really implies um, is that minorities like queer people, um, are, their employment is threatened by this bill. Um, it also threatens to override anti-discrimination acts, um, which currently are put in, in different states. Um, so it's a way of, of attacking and diminishing those rights around anti-discrimination that had been put forward in states like Tasmania. Um, and finally, there's protections uh, around statements of belief. So um, th this is originally what they wanted was what they called the controversial Falau Clause, um, which apparently now it's watered down. But again, um, with having these um, these statement of belief, um, this statement of belief clause, um, it does put into question, you know, the right for someone to uh, make a bigoted comment and then not be able to uh, be uh, responsible or or, um, or you know prosecuted um, under an anti discrimination act. Um, this is clearly an attack on our community. It's clearly an attack on on the queer community, um, and we need to see see this bill struck down in its entirety. Also, can you explain why you are opposed to the bill? Really, we have to be honest about why this bill has come up and why it is the Liberal National Party that is putting up this bill. This bill has been promised to the religious right of this country ever since marriage equality was passed. Um, we know that it always has been um, a, a form of backlash because queer people demanded and won their rights, uh, even though it was through the incredibly painful process of the plebiscite. Um, we know that at its base, um, what this is not about is about the freedom for religious people um, to express their faith. It absolutely is not the right for religious minorities to express their faith. It is backlash against the queer community because we push for and won our rights under marriage equality. The fact that federal labour um, is basically coming to this table and saying that they are seeking they can potentially seek bipartisan support on the bill if it goes to inquiry, is federal labour stopping to their right. It is opportunistically going to the right instead of actually protecting the rights of queer people. You know, federal labour um, and, and anyone else who votes on this bill who is left-wing needs to side with the queer community and not side with the Liberal Party. Can you expand on why the religious right are so worried about the marriage equality victory a few years ago and also what this means in this legislation? Yeah, look, I think that the religious right are, are so frustrated with the win for marriage equality because uh, at the end of the day, it's them losing losing the, the, the moral majority um, on what their series of, of beliefs are. And I think it's particularly insidious um, that what's been put forward in this bill uh, is so heavily around the material rights of queer people. It's about the rights of queer people at work. It's about their right to not be discriminated on a day-to-day -day basis. You know, if queer people can't work, they can't make a living, that is one of the most disempowering things um, that can happen to our community um, to have a, us economically deprived like that um, is a, a huge material power um, that the religious right can hold over queer people by the sheer fact of the sectors um, and areas of our economy um, in which they have dominance in terms of schools or, you know, private um, aged care facilities or private health care. You know, all of these things are the places in which the religious right have their true economic power and the way that they want to exercise it 
um, in in the harshest way um, is by is is by inflicting um, their moral beliefs uh, onto on, onto all people um, and therefore deprive uh, queer people um, of their right to live to work to have a job to put food on their table. Um, it, that is the reason why we have to we have to fight against it. You know, it's not just fighting against um, what what a reactionary religious uh, rights opinion of our community is morally, um, but it's also about the need to actually break up the economic power that they hold over our society. The fact that these religious rights are not just religious fanatics, and they are fanatics, um, but they are also the business owners, the CEOs, the ruling class who through privatisation and holding on to these private industries are essentially controlling the lives, the material lives of people having that power over them, um, which is why we don't only need to defeat the bill, um, but we actually need to defeat that economic power that they hold as bosses uh, over us in society. I also asked Charlie to respond to this comment by Morrison that the legislation is a shield and not a sword. Yeah, look, Morrison using the phrase, the phrase that it's a, it's a shield, not a sword, um, and I've also uh, seen this language also um, be picked up on the left. Um, well, not <laughs> the left. Um, I think it's, I think it's, I think it's absolutely bullshit, um, and I think it's, it, it is particularly insidious um, as well. Um, the way that um, lay, that that there have been some pockets um, of of the pro- of, of progressives um, and progressive communities um, actually questioning, you know, maybe actually this bill is going to be um, good for for religious minorities. You know, actually, like the the, the good thing about this bill um, is that it will be good for for Muslims or, or or Jewish Jewish people. That is that is just simply not true, and that is not the reason why Morrison is putting this up. They are not. That is not the people that he is appealing to. It's not the leaders of the church that he's appealing to. Um, that's the you know it, it it is for the religious right and the ruling class because if it didn't have to do with the right of an employer to sack an employee, how is that how is that a shield instead of a sword? How is the right to fire someone a, a, a protection for a person of faith? They are the person that is determining the material reality of someone's lives, you know, to end their, end their job, um, to stop them from being able to put food on the table. Now, I don't know about you, but if my employer turned around tomorrow and said, actually, surely because of your identity and my religious beliefs, um, you're, not, you're, you're going to be out on your ass and not have a job, I would feel like someone had stabbed me with a sword. I, didn't, I wouldn't think that person was protecting themselves with a shield, that's for sure. And so what would genuine religious freedom look like? Yeah, genuine religious, genuine, genuine religious freedom would be the right for people to practice their, uh, relig- their religion um, and their spirituality um, in a way that does not, does not allow them to give power over other people, whether it be around their material lives or, or, or in, their, in, in their statements. You know, religious freedoms is not the freedom to be a bigot. And we absolutely cannot confuse those two. And the fact that conversations around freedom of speech um, and, and anti-discrimination is mixed in with the right for a business owner to fire an employee um, is just absolutely ridiculous. And it is such an insidious way that the word freedom is used by the right wing in this country. Freedom for anyone is the freedom to live their life. It is the freedom for them to get by day to day with what they need. It's freedom for them to provide for their family, no matter what that family looks like, for them to be in a community, to have material safety. That is a freedom that everyone shares, whether they are a religious person or not. You know, we can, we can go around and saying what, what we believe, share our ideas for people's faith to be shared. Um, and so it should. And for people to lead fulfilling spiritual and moral lives. That freedom is not the freedom to go out and vilify someone 
for their sexual identity or their gender identity. It is not the freedom to take away their material safety within society. Before we go, I must ask, can you please tell us what is Pride in Protest and what activities are you involved in? Yeah, so Pride in Protest is a, a queer liberation collective. Um, we hold a number of rallies and marches throughout the year, including uh, this year during Mardi Gras on the day of day of Mardi Gras on the street, um, which had several thousand people and one was one of the largest uh, queer rights demonstrations since marriage equality. Um, we also run for the Mardi Gras board. So I am a um, outgoing Mardi Gras board director. Um, we have our lead candidate, Wei Tai Haynes, um, who will be taking over. We fight for a Mardi Gras um, that is for the queer community, by the queer community, not under the control of um, corporate power um, and that doesn't um, put up with um, and, and, and will not accept the um, acceptance of police um, or or liberals um, into the space of Mardi Gras because of the way that they attack our community. Yeah, I think that it is so important that this bill is struck down and we all must unite really clearly in saying that we want to kill the bill. At the same time, you know, we, while we are killing this bill, we have to be pushing forward um, to, to win more rights, to, to, to win a better place and liberation within our society. Um, not only do we need to, to, to kill these bills, we need to kill the Mark Latham bills and the attacks on trans kids um, and education, but we need to win back things like safe schools. We need to have those programs to make sure that trans kids um, and queer kids in schools um, are, are properly protected um, and feel safe to be who they are in education. We need to fight for workers' rights of trans people in society. We need to win things like gender transition leave. We need to win um, transition surgeries to be on Medicare so that trans people don't have to pay thousands of thousands of dollars to have life-saving surgery. Um, we need to have sex workers on, into anti-discrimination so that people who are both queer and sex workers are also protected in their work. There are so many fights that are in front of us um, that isn't just beating back the bigots, but actually winning a world for our community. And finally, is there anything else that you'd like to say? Yeah, I just want to say that we have a, um, we have a street protest again um, for this Mardi Gras um, in 2022. Um, that's on the 5th of March. That's the day of Mardi Gras. That's going to be a, a staunch, incredible grassroots protest that is on the ground on Oxford Street, um, despite the fact that, you know, the corporate Mardi Gras have decided to um, privatise their parade and put it into the SCG. We will be on the streets where Mardi Gras deserves to be. We will be fighting to kill this bill. Um, we'll be fighting for the rights of, of, of all queer people across this country um, to, to be loud and proud and say, actually, we're here to celebrate our Pride in Mardi Gras, but we're also here to fight for our rights. Thanks again to Charlie Murphy from Pride in Protest for joining us uh, today. Thanks also to everyone who's been watching or listening to this uh, video or podcast. We do really appreciate it. If you can support our work by becoming a Green Left supporter, if you're not already, it'll make a really big difference. It's the best way that you can support our work. But even if you can't afford or if you're already a supporter, you can show us a bit of support simply by giving a thumbs up to this video or this podcast. Please share The Green Left Show with your friends and workmates, neighbours, whoever might be interested. We do want to build the audience for this show. And until next time, we'll see you again.